Thank you, Stephanie. And um, thanks to everyone. Uh, I think uh, it was a very good um, way of uh, formulating the discussion here because um, just popping by all these different banks, uh, the Latvian bank was, as you said, a very special thing. Uh, it was um, a heritage from darker times, uh, aimed for uh, quite different purposes than, than normal banking to, to just phrase it mildly without going into the details. So. While the other banks all had to wrestle with the legislation. And, and uh, when I hear people saying that uh, the BRD, etc., was not in function, uh, I, I do not agree with that because uh, whatever you think about how articles and paragraphs, how they were interpreted, and you can always have different views on that, it was very clear that the authorities and governments in these special cases all had to wrestle and deal with and, and relate to the legislation. And they did it in different ways. I mean, um, uh, Banco Popular may be the, the, the most um, elegant way. Um, everyone from Spain doesn't agree with that. Uh, the Italian banks, interesting thing to note. The long-term political problem in Italy was that a lot of depositors and finances of banks uh, did not understand that you are facing a risk when you have bought covered bonds in a bank. And what I'm trying to say with this is that what we now see is an educational and learning experience of that the landscape has changed. It has changed very much. It has changed via the uh, new legislations on uh, rec capital requirements, uh, by a number of different legislations in this context. Uh, we, uh, it's an alphabet soup, so I will not dive into that. And of course, I would like to say the BRD, which is changing the logic, because what it says is that if you lend money to a bank, you're facing a risk. And, and what is very clear is that the owners will not be bailed out. And what is very clear is that everyone else who is financing the bank is running a risk, and then you can discuss in what order things will be bailed in. When, and I, I think this is important for the, the future perspective when we are discussing here today. When we discussed, legislated about the BRD, there was one idea that you should have special trenches of capital that was supposed to be the bailinable capital. I was against that uh, of two reasons. One was that if you need to bail in a bank, you need to have the opportunity to bail in everything. If you have to have all the tools and opportunities. That was the one argument. The other one was that, and this is what I think is the most important thing with the BRD, it's like uh, the nuclear deterrent. It means that everyone who is lending money to a bank knows that there is a risk. It can be big or small, depending on where you are in the hierarchy. That is risk, which means that in that sense we have to speak with Chairman Mao, uh, thousands and thousands of supervisors. Well, he didn't speak about supervisors. He spoke about flowers, I think. But this is important because this is creating a market discipline that, of course, it is not there from day one or not even from day two. But in that sense, we are in a period of transition. Regarding um, the change of the landscape, uh, we also dealt with, as mo most of you remember, the, with the banking structure reform where I managed to achieve the support in Parliament that we should not go for the brutal separation idea. And this also in the end meant that the Commission withdraw the proposal. And now we are dealing with the, uh, you could say, the renovation or the reformation of BRD along the fact that we are introducing TLAC. But it's not a general reformation of uh, the BRD. It is introducing the TLAC. And I have three main points that for me is important in that sense. 
we shall introduce TLAC, of course. But in doing so, I don't want to create a room for extra burdens on European banks that, it nece that is necessary in order to fulfill international agreements. That's why I, in my draft report, have, so to say, streamlined the requirements on subordinated debt is to be as for the TLAC, but not more. That is one important pillar in this. And the second is that, of course, MRL, eligible capital, MRL liabilities, can be more than the TLAC, but not in the form of subordinated debt. So here, and that is what we are now discussing in, in Parliament, in the negotiating group, uh, how to define what resolution authorities can have to require on banks regarding MRL and how to define that. I think we will take away the guidance, and I think we will have on the other hand, some sort of um, uh, discretionary decisions based upon a number of variables that I think is uh, relevant for this. But having said this about the TLAC streamlining and subordinated debt, the MRL, I'm also eager, as you have seen in the report, that we also shall have some balance regarding the requirements of the MRL. So if a bank is well capitalized, this must have influence on the MRL requirements. So you're not in reality punishing banks with high levels of own capital with high or even higher levels of MRL. So to say, if you have 100% own capital, which I advise you not to have, but if you have that, then of course above that having 100% MRL, so to say, that is not what I want to achieve. Uh, and, and then you maybe understand what I mean, that this must be seen in a holistic perspective. Important for those banks who today have low levels of capital. Because uh, if they will be punished with more MRL, they will not increase the level of own capital. And important for those banks with high levels of capital, because if they are punished for that, they will maybe decrease the level of capital a little or adjusted to that. So this is, as you see, a logic relation between streamlining the subordinate, subordinated debt along the lines of TLAC, discretionary decisions, uh, meaning that MRL can be higher than the TLAC, but not in the form of subordinated debt. But the MRL, on the other hand, must be related to the level of own capital. And then, we are, of course, also discussing the issue about moratorium, but I, I find that I'm uh, coming to a point where I, I have used my, my, my 10 minutes, but uh, I just want to fin finalize that end there by saying my, my aim is that we shall uh, not go along the lines of commission. Uh, we are talking about two days in some way, in some part of the phases of resolution, and, and maybe, maybe, uh, I can say maybe, an extra day if it is demonstrated that the bank is viable, that it will, so to say, be alive after the resolution, if you need that in order to get it proper. Uh, if I, I speak as a medical doctor, I mean, first we have the operation, then you can close it for two days, but then after the operation, the, the, the patient needs to rest uh, and can't meet its family until one day after. Well, I'm not a doctor, as you can understand, but um, this is the logic behind what I'm trying to achieve. Thank you very much.